next one, this wearable gaming glove for physical therapy. Yeah, so it's a wearable device developed by Anthropic uh, to help with physical therapy and rehabilitation at home through gamification. Gamification is everywhere nowadays. It's it's even in Duolingo. Um, gamification, for those that don't know, is is just like you've got a scoreboard or a leaderboard and you're getting all these points and it's essentially meaningless points. Like you can't use them to buy anything, but um, it, it kind of to help to incentivize you to keep going, which is, it, uh, it honestly works great. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. So um, the way this device works is it uses computer vision and AI to track the hand and finger motion without any sensors or gloves. And it's based on video input from a smartphone camera. So by tracking the range of motion, speed, accuracy, and other metrics, it can turn individual exercises into competitive games to motivate progress and help patients stick to their therapy regimes. Um, by tracking the subtle motion improvements over time, it can, it can dynamically adjust the game um, as skills progress and continuously challenge patients. So it can, it, it can, I would say it's great to augment with like regular th physical therapy. I don't think this is at the point where it's going to replace it, but it's, it's really good. So you need, um, so I guess some of the games that were presented were turning finger tapping or pinching motions into literal games, like catching fish or crushing obstacles. Um, and your performance impacts the game, which is kind of cool. So what they're planning to do is it aims to make physical therapy engagement more accessible and enjoyable outside of the PT sessions and all that sort of stuff. So um, hopefully allowing it to incorporate it into their daily life and hopefully um, speed up recovery, if that makes sense. So um, really interesting to see. The cool thing I like about this is the software, it's going to be available as an SDK for clinics and therapists for them to be able to design their own customized gamified routines tailored for individual patients and recovery goals. So um, really interesting to see that that they're that they're going to allow that kind of stuff, which is great because everyone's different. So yeah, I really like the concept. I've worked with a few startups who were doing physical therapy devices, and you know we talk about uh, what was the place the power glove. Just, uh, every once in a while, it comes up. The where did that go? But the uh, concept of putting this interface into either games or everyday computing like if you can just use it to surf the web um or even do work then your physical therapy becomes part of your daily journey rather than something else you have to do on top of it and that yeah. will I think, really much increase the odds of you doing your physical therapy Plus something like this would could easily report back to your physiotherapist to know how you're doing, if you are doing it, not doing it, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like I see my grandfather, he has to do his exercises every day. I don't know if he'd, he'd be interested in gamifying, but like anyone who'd have to do exercises every day, if you've got a game that you have to play and you're on a certain level and the more you play it, the for the, the higher the levels you get, um, I certainly would, would be it would make me do my ex daily exercises if I had to do them more often. And as you're showing the video, it definitely looks like a stripped down version of a power glove, the Nintendo power glove, which is kind of cool with lights and stuff like that. So, and the type of motion that you're doing with, it looks like it's power glove technology, to be honest, because I used to have one and, and the way you move your hand and it's just like how, how the power glove would interact with the Nintendo. So yeah, it, very interesting. And I, this is the video off their website showing people using different parts of their hands and trying to um, get back. It, it's really interesting device. It looks like a power glove. It detects movement. I think this is interesting in so many ways. From example, a new interface as well as therapy. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. Because we, we go ahead. No, no, go ahead. We talk about because we, we talk about different interfaces all the time, and um, I'm obviously looking. I'm always looking for something different uh, because I, I don't like my specific mouse, and I, I'll get over that when I eventually get off my button buy a new one. But uh, we've been stuck with this for how many years, and now we've got a touch interface, which is interesting. But when are we going to get the uh, Minority Report interface? 
Yeah. Well, we kind of had that with the Xbox Kinect. It wasn't the best, but with the Kinect camera and the technology and the data that came out of that is being used a lot in in uh, in a lot of different things um, nowadays. I still think there's a use case for the Xbox Kinect. That was my favorite. Uh, those are my some of my favorite games. They got you in like they would track all of your movements. You could do things. You could pinch. You could push forward and different things like that. So I don't think we're too far off. Um, of of the minority report type interface i know actually he was wearing a glove wasn't he to interface with it at the time too yeah i think so yeah so <laughs> you merge those two technologies the connect and this and this and this um and this technology together you've pretty much got your minority report so um, yeah you need the other thing you'll need is the uh glasses yeah yeah to, for for the ar the augmented reality absolutely yeah, well, we already have those, right? And all, all we need is an interface now to, to be able, um, and a UI that, that can utilize that. So I would say we're five years away from that. I think it's going to be longer because, I, I mean, you look, we already have those, like you say, those glasses. Yeah. But um, the best ones I've seen so far are uh, the Apple ones, and they're just starting to come out, and we'll have to see what they're like. Yeah. But they're uh, big and bulky. They've got the fake digital eyes in the front. Like there's a whole like if you're by yourself all the time, great. But this is a alienation device if you live with people. Yeah, for so sure. We have to we have to kind of I I I'm against removing continuously removing ourselves from reality. Um, I think we're we're losing stuff there. But back to this, what kind of treatments are they aiming for like i i saw stroke somewhere is there other type of is this for carpal tunnel is this just getting things back what what can we use what can we treat with something like this yeah so uh i think there's there's the like the it, it's it's honestly unlimited at this point but um uh, they were i think they're, they're really they're really looking to to um target people with with kind of upper limb um things at this point obviously because it's a it's a it's a hand-based thing but um uh, i'm not too sure exactly other than people with carpal tunnel people with maybe tennis elbow people with uh, again i'm not a doctor so i wouldn't know what kind of ailments this could um this could you this could be used with but um um, there's a, anything that, that you're using physical therapy, if you've been in an accident and you need to get some hand movement back, um, there's one where it, it, it really, I can't remember the name of the disease, but it, it makes your hand kind of cramp up. Um, and I think that could be used for this too, but it would have to be used in conjunction with other kind of devices as well that would help to stretch out your hand but there's tons of there's tons of uh of use cases for this absolutely yeah and they talk about the tactile feedback and how realistic it is because it can simulate various textures um allowing an immersive experience which is interesting for gaming like we were talking about this for physical therapy and then we switched to uh gaming just from an interesting um point of view i'm very curious as to and these as you can see these are some of the applications from a therapy play they're trying to get you to uh move your hand in certain rhythmic form of control which is like what rockstar uh the yeah. one on the left looks like a rock band or, or whatnot or yeah or what was these, that um go ahead. That old video game that they had with uh where you had to collect the blocks was it called blocks i can't remember but there was a game called blocks, but I don't remember specifically um, how, like if that was the game, but th yeah. see, there you go. And you're obviously trying to, you play these games for a few minutes a day and that's your physical therapy. Yeah. This is interesting. I, I like where we're headed. I like this as an interface. I like it as a, a therapeutic device. I love the haptic feedback. Did they mention, you know, battery life or anything? Not that I saw, no. Um, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing the battery life could be long, uh, depending on the size of the battery, because it doesn't seem like 
there's too much power drain except for maybe the leds which don't which don't drain that much power anyway but um the the sensors could depending on what sensors they're using but i'm sure i'm sure that they, they'll get more efficient but no i don't know what the what the battery life is on one, something like this well this is interesting i just noticed this and brought it up here like Imagine using something like this to learn how to play the piano where the thing's going to vibrate you on your finger to tell you which finger to use as you go. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that and I don't, it's going to be hard because then they would have to track the position of your hand as well. And I think it can do that, but it'd have to be pretty accurate for those keys, right? Well, I think you'd have a starting position and whatnot, but yeah, the concept is to, is to, to work on the patterns, right? And uh, if it from a therapy point of view, that's great. But also from a learning point of view, it might um, have that haptic feedback might be some things that that people were an additional feedback that allows you to memorize it quicker, the motions and the movement. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be an interesting device. Um, For me, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know what the additional use case are going to be. Obviously you could use this for interfacing with, with a video game for sure with, with an Xbox or something. Absolutely. Uh, I know Xbox was a big proponent in putting together a accessible, um, an accessible controller. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's really cool. Um, but this could be the next step to that. It looks a little kludgy right now when I, when we see people using it um, in some of the videos we have been seeing and had up here. So it's not quite as responsive as we'd like. And you can pre-order these. I think they're about 400 bucks. Yeah, I think we had to add up earlier. Yeah. Um, 350, you can secure one. Um, enjoy 12% off the original savings of 400. Yeah, pay the remaining. So if you buy now and pay 50 bucks up front, you only have 350 left. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Um, like that that price point would be for the actual physical therapy clinics and things like that. So that's not a bad price point for them. Yeah. Um so we'll have to see. I I we'll have to see if this gets adopted, if this gets uh proven from a technology point of view. When I say adopted, does this be get supported by governments under Medicare or other plans so people uh, will get this covered as a physical therapy option on their employment benefits? Uh, that's when you start seeing this actually do the uptake. Until then, I'm not sure. Yeah, they'll have to. I, I honestly think they'll have to improve the the accuracy, like you said, of the of the sensors and things like that. But it's a great proof of concept. I, well, it's more than a proof of concept, but it's a great, uh, it's a great initial product. I didn't, you know, we, we've seen the motion capture suits in Hollywood and everything starts coming along. This kind of technology is going to be really, it is really cool. And, mm-hmm. you know, you talked about the connect games. Some of them were your favorite. The problem is the interface just wasn't good enough. You'd push, but mm-hmm. not every time it would catch your push and this and that, yeah. not at the time. And not, so, it has to be better. That's why people like professional gamers use wired controllers, not wireless controllers, because apparently that fraction of a millisecond makes a difference yeah. to them. And not, sure. you know, I'm not to me, but so it has to be better. I, but I love where we're going from a physical therapy point of view, because this is as soon as you can now, it won't be long, you can put resistance on those things too. For it's sure. Just haptic That's- feedback to make you move. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be a huge game changer is is, is implementing some sort of uh, uh, not feedback but yeah for sure yeah resistance so yeah, resistance. that you can either whether it's built into the glove at a five pound two pound whatever resistance level for you to make the movements or whatever or if it's electronically controlled because now you have resistance when you're moving your fingers so you can take your physical therapy up on it. Like it's like squeezing yeah. a tennis ball potentially or moving your fingers with resistance versus non-resistance. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. And if you want to take this stuff to the next level, combination of haptic feedback, uh, electronically controlled resistance and mu- electronic muscle stimulation, you've got a potential, um, muscle generating device that all the workout 
uh, or non-workout yeah. fans will like, depending on how you look at it. For sure. Yeah. No, there's there's tons of, of potential for this thing. I think it's a great starting point for sure. Um, but we're going to have to be cautious. There's, there's a bunch of things we're going to have to be cautious of is any kind of biases or, or as far as um, uh, bias-free accuracy and different things like that. Because if it's tracking, depending on the skin color too, I don't know if it's just tracking the sensors, but it's tracking the skin as well. So uh, we have to be cautious of that and see. But yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's got to be. It's got to work, and it's got to yeah. work on an old man and a little kid and a pregnant woman and different ethnicities. If we all have slightly different biological ranges or whatnot, I don't know. But yeah, it's got to work. It can't just yeah. be work on. Yeah, on one, one, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I love 